Hello and welcome to Community Pulse, a CAN TV program featuring local leaders and organizations focused on improving health and well-being in the city of Chicago. My name is Megan Phillip. I serve as the executive director of HC3, the Healthcare Council of Chicago, and I'm joined by my colleague Levi Moore, the coordinator of the Foxglove Alliance of the Hectone Institute, and uh, our unfortunately our other colleague and co-host uh, could not join us, but. Um, Takora Love is also with us um, in spirit from the Hectone uh, Nurses in the Humanities. Uh, this collaboration between our three organizational entities has been going on uh, all year long, and we're really grateful for the opportunity to be able to share stories around healthcare in Chicago. Um, so this is the second part of a two-part episode. So we already started to dig into some of the big trends from this year, and one of the last things we kind of left off with um, was the sort of migrant crisis that continues to rise, um, uh, both for the public health standpoint of the need for care and the opportunity to house them and get jobs. And so I'm going to kick it over to Levi to, to weigh in on, on sort of the next big thing. Okay. Um, like I said, on the previous show, we're going to start with this topic. And if you think about it, they're not separate issues. Um, part is there's the migrant refugee issue. Who can come to America to seek asylum? They're right. We also have the issue of the governor of Texas shipping people to Chicago. Um, we've also sort of opened up a scab on something that's been prevalent, uh, the lack of housing for homeless people in Chicago that's never really been dealt with um, effectively, uh, which also brings up, okay, do we have enough affordable housing? Do we have enough um, lower income housing, public housing? So we have all of these things that are hitting right now. And guess what? All that money that was available um, because of COVID relief and everything, that's gone. That federal money is gone, um, which means that there is less money that went to the state of Illinois to distribute to communities, uh, which has left places like Chicago um, in a financial crisis situation. Uh, the same goes for uh, New Yorkers just like us. Um, and so this is really going to be, and because this show is about really, you know, public health, um, just from the public health angle, um, a lot of these people who have come here have gone through absolute ordeals. So if their their health care is compromised. Uh, we also have, with our safety health care network uh, in Illinois, uh, with a lot of people being booted off of Medicaid because of Medicaid redetermination, they're going back to seeking um, free care through Cook County uh, Health and Hospital System, uh, through um, the Illinois Association of Free Clinics. And so it's just more people going into this same problem. Now, there are some potential solutions like the speeding, the, the um, intake center, the um, speeding up of work permits, um, and to a certain extent, if we get through this period, um, I've, I've, I've actually told people that, you know what's going to happen in three to five years? There's going to be a little Venezuela neighborhood in Chicago. Um, there'll, there'll be small business people, work, uh, working people. It will help with some of the uh, workforce stuff. But the short-term problem is how, where do we house these people? Um, if they're sick and a lot of them do have issues, there are a lot of pregnant women um, that, that, you know, how are we going to address this? And we think that, um, well, actually, everything is still in play right now. Uh, the state of Illinois just did a, an announcement um, alongside with something that Mayor Johnson uh, brought in. Um, and so there's going to be more of a coordinated effort. But um, I think, Megan, I think we're going to devote an entire show to this in 2024. Yeah, I mean, 
I think that one of the things you said was, you know, there's this this friction between the fact that we have had homeless or unhoused folks um, prior to having asylum seekers join mm -hmm. us here in Chicago. And unfortunately, you know, it's not an either or, it should be a yes and to this problem. I think that, you know, the United States as, as a country and Chicago is representative of uh, what a sanctuary city looks like. Um, but unfortunately, we're just under-resourced and we need to come up with quick solutions. Um, so I encourage people to go to welcomeillinois.org. That is where you can roll up your sleeves to donate, to volunteer. A lot of different organizations are involved with what we can do better. Um, and it's going to require every single one of us to support this. Um, and it will continue to, to leave Levi's point, I think, three to five years from now, if we do this right, I think we'll have integrated a, a bunch of new neighbors into our communities and into our workforce and um, really creating more vibrancy in Chicago if we're open. And and it is not just Venezuelans. It is coming from everywhere. There is a, a clear um, uh, influx from, from South America, but they are coming. There are uh, asylum seekers from, from many different places, from Africa and other places that I've heard of. And this is where we we i personally want to make the case that chicago is a great place to welcome this opportunity for for new folks um but how do we help some of the folks that have been here um we are working with a mayor that is you know dealing with crisis upon crisis and i think he's trying to set the agenda such that you know his budget is balanced but also that he's really meeting the needs of the community that he promised and that he was elected to serve um, so I applaud his administration that I think they're just trying to wrap their heads around wh what can we do from a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and I don't know that every solution is the right solution, but we're trying things. And so um, for, for all the opportunity that there is, I, I'm very hopeful that going into next year, we're going to um, be able to solve some of these things and see some, some changeover. Well, you know, this is, you know, brings back one other point before we leave it. Um, it's something that's near and dear to me because when um, I first became involved with KNTV, I was the executive director of the National Veterans Art Museum. And we found out that guess who the majority of homeless people were in Chicago? Vietnam veterans. Um, so Oddly enough, I'm not sure if they're actually talking about what they really believe in, but thank goodness I've heard people who have never been concerned about vet, about homeless people talking about homeless people now. So, you know, hopefully this there will be a lot of things we'll be able to get done with a new group of players. Now, as we mentioned, Mayor Johnson, our new mayor, and uh, this is new um, and also um, a lot of people in terms of health care are going to be new too we just well we just got a new head of Chicago Department of Public Health because of uh, the mayor deciding on a different direction from Dr. Arwadi who helped navigate us through the pandemic and I, I, I'm also um, this is just recently the CEO of the Cook County Health and Hospital System, Israel uh, Rocha, he's leaving, um, I believe, December 1st. Mm -hmm. So probably uh, he will be gone by the time the show airs. And there's some others, too. So, I mean, and with the new mayor comes a new administration. And I think that there's a lot of new players um, that are really thoughtful on his team. Um, and to Levi's point, we're starting to see some changeover in, in other arenas. But the state also is seeing a huge influx of change that's due on January 1st. Um, Teresa Eagleson is stepping down as the director at HFS. Um, Sol Flores is stepping down as deputy governor. And um, uh, Mark Smith is also stepping down from DCFS. Now we know that um, Secretary Ho is already stepping in for for Seoul at the at the governor's office, which is wonderful because she's no stranger or, or, or um, uh, person that none of us are are um, accustomed to, and she's already well versed in these things from working at I, IDHS. So 
very exciting to see people stepping up and stepping in. Um, but I, I'm curious to see what happens next. That's a lot of changes. Um, it maybe comes at a right time. You know, we're in the post post pandemic world, and a lot of those people were were at the helm during the, this crisis. And um, as we move to what is the new normal, and as we navigate what's possible in our healthcare and social services and government ecosystem, um, it's going to require some some new thought leaders and and hopefully advocates that um, want to drive some change. So what their agendas and what their purpose and what their um, sticking issues will be, it's a to be determined. So it's going to be exciting to explore throughout 2024. Yeah, and one, one thing I'm very hopeful of is that, um, and this might be a little bit inside baseball, but we're going to probably have the best relations between the Chicago Department of Public Health and the Cook County Department of Public Health that we have ever had because of the relationship between President Preckwinkle and Mayor Johnson. And uh, that relationship uh, at the top will go down to the agency level of being an old uh, state government guy. And um, it should help in terms of how they coordinate and then also with a governor who's from the city of Chicago, uh, who lives in the city of Chicago. And uh, hopefully we'll see that coordination have a lot of benefits. Um, so, you know, that is, you know, we, we're trying to, you know, we, we wanted to do two things. We wanted to wrap up top stories of in healthcare in Chicago in 2023. And we wanted to talk about some of these comings and goings that are going to really kind of impact um, how those issues were dealt with and, and issues that are going to be going forward. Yeah. Um, and I, and to, to really kind of put concretely out there and what's exciting is we're going to be doing something with HC3 in early January around this. Um, you know, what we've established in both the first episode and this episode is really not only Chicago, but Illinois is a sanctuary for a lot of things. We've seen across the board in a lot of the interviews that we've had that LGBTQT+, women's health, uh, migrant health, these are all things that Illinois is stepping up and stepping in to support. And I constantly think that we're going to see more of this in 2024. So I'm very excited with new leadership to help lead that. Okay. Uh, now we're going to talk about us. Okay, um, we represent uh, different organizations, and like we said, um, our third co-host partner, Takora Love, uh, um, the head of Hectones Nurses and Humanities Program, which that program is also the Chicago chapter of the American Society of uh, Surgical Nurses, uh, is ill and was not able to uh, be with us today. Um, but what we want to do is we want to kind of go through on what our organizations did uh, in 2023. So um, if we could go to the graphic, we're going to start out with, I'm going to have to read this because uh, these are um, Nurses in the Humanities. Um, and one of the things they did um, was that uh, they did a Remembrance and Renewed Hope exhibit at the International Museum of Surgical Science. Um, through art, they displayed on a dinner table. Actually, I went to this. And it was phenomenal. Um, it was, if you never think of like the plate settings, and the time, that was the art. Uh, but each plate would have like an image of a nursing pioneer or a nursing hero. Uh, it was really, really uh, well done. Uh, they also had a fireside chat with uh, Carolyn Metzler at the, uh, at the, at the Museum, of, Museum of Natural Surgical Science and a poetry writing workshop um, with, doc, with a, a Dr. Hauser. And there were and will continue to work um, volunteering with the uh, Kindness Campaign and the Guest House. Um, next, um, me, Fox Club. All right, um, Fox Club Alliance uh, is 15 or 15 public health care organizations. And Fox Club is financially supported, it's solely financially supported by the Hectone Institute of Medicine. I work for Hectone, and my job is Fox Club Alliance Coordinator. So to give you a couple of uh, Hectone highlights, okay, um, 
Hectone uh, run its four, the Hectone runs an international humanities journal. And it goes out to about maybe a million, um, has about a million page views a year. Um, Hectone received its fourth Apex Award for Excellence in Publishing uh, this last year. Also did the first ever in the history of the, of the journal, first student essay contest, uh, which we had probably about 400 uh, entries from all of the United States, all over the world. And the winner um, was actually from Chicago. I can't think of her name right now. But if you go to the, uh, Hec the Hectone Journal website, you'll be able to see uh, and read a lot of those entries. Um, now, these are sort of connected. Um, Hectone launched or did a relaunch of an education initiative. And that was kind of on me to, well, not kind of, it was on me to do that. Um, and so um, we kind of looked at, okay, what can we do to help and connect? So we ended up working with um, a new member of the Fox Glove Alliance, and we got two this year, um, Chicago Healthcare Workforce Collaborative, and I'll go and tell them a little bit later. But um, th that collaborative is set up, made up of a variety of, of number of hospitals in Chicago. Now, normally, I didn't realize it, they feel like they're in competition a lot of times. This was a situation where they all had this common problem of workers. So there were a lot of HR people uh, from the hospitals that are working together to come up with like different pathways to assist uh, Chicago youth in getting into jobs in healthcare. And my role was just sort of like connecting them with other organizations like I Am Able, like the um, Union League Boys and Girls Club, which if things work out right, uh, there'll be a number of situations where they will present different healthcare careers to the 10,000 youth that that Boys and Girls Club touches a year. Um, then I'll say these are part of you know what we did in 2023, but they're really what we're going to do in 2024. Uh, they're the four pillars of Fox Club. Uh, one, only drug drug reuse opportunity program, which allows the donation of free of unused, unopened prescription drugs to be donated to free clinics. Um, we're also going to be doing a really big push on innovation, promoting innovation, because uh, we'll, this will definitely be one or two shows next year. But Chicago right now is becoming a life sciences global innovation hub right before our eyes, um, which is great for the economy. Things like what they're doing with the uh, ARC Innovation Center are redoing the old Michael Reese site that's been vacant in Chicago for years and thousands of job opportunities for youth in Chicago, um, which ties into the other two priorities that FOSCO have had, M3R, more minorities in medical research. And there are two parts that we're focused on. One. Uh, is to raise the awareness of minority participation in clinical trials. Uh, we're definitely going to have a show on that in 2024. I'm going to probably leave it with the uh, Invenio, which is kind of a way to provide, to conduct clinical trials, but using a vehicle that will actually go to the person participating in the clinical trial. But that's going to be a huge, that was a huge focus to try to put this together to figure out how it really became exposed during the pandemic, where when they were looking for vaccines, the problem was that there weren't enough black and brown people in the clinical trials. And there was a huge concern about what the vaccines working on black and brown people. So that's why that is critical. Then there's the long term solution, which we call the pipeline part of, of uh, M3R, which is the long-term solution is that we need to have uh, more uh, minority youth in healthcare careers, actually conducting clinical trials. So uh, that kind of goes along with the Hectone Education Initiative and with um, that other component of, of M3R. So I want to, that's the end up with uh, FOSCO, and now we're going to go to HC3. Yeah, so 
you know, as a reminder, HC3, we convene um, healthcare stakeholders and organizations. So we have a little over 50 different organizations ranging from law firms and investment firms on the corporate side to providers like hospital systems and FQHCs and, and institutions like nonprofits and community-based organizations like the Hectone Institute. So, you know, our collective has only continued to strengthen partnerships. I always say that a lot of what we do is extracurricular to just doing the direct service and supportive work that our uh, providers do. Um, in our thought leadership, um, you know, we expanded not only through this Can TV program, but we also launched a podcast. So if you listen to podcasts, you should check out the HC3 podcast, which streams on all platforms. Um, uh, and then uh, in uh, March, we hosted um, some great conversations and, uh, oh yeah, so March is when we launched that. Um, the other opportunity that we've really seen come underway is a lot of our initiatives and partnerships have continued to be strengthened. Um, we continue to do long-term work with organizations like Aclavis and Violence Prevention, um, our newest partner um, that we've been working with for about two years now. Um, Honeysuckle Home just opened their doors recently, um, and that was two years of, of working to discussions and I just met the founders in our interview on Community Pulse. So we are really proud that we've continued to keep our um, arms extended into our community so that we can take the resources that we are collecting and and, um, and, and be enterprising and, and really connect those dots. Um, we are very much looking forward to um, the work that we've been doing through the HFS Transformation Collaboratives, and um, we've been part of one called PATH, Pediatric Adolescent Transformative Healthcare, opening next year, so I'm sure there will be an opportunity to hear about it on this show. Um, but I'm really grateful to learn about many of the HFS collaboratives and hope that we're gonna continue to highlight and show um, you know, from Wellness West to Southside Healthy Communities Organization and strengthen those partnerships um, going forward. So. Lots that we've done um, both in community and in thought leadership, and we are just grateful for the opportunities that we've had to really um, continue to collect information and, and see where there's a need. Um, so that's what we've been up to this year at over at HC3. Um, you know, looking at 2024, what are you most excited and hopeful for? Um, okay. I'm really fascinated by, well, I'm an economic development person at my core, I think. Um, used to work for the state of Illinois as an hour development agency. And to watch a global tech presence in Chicago happen right before our eyes that um, gives us a unique presence in technology um, is beyond exciting. And we're seeing it develop where there's time for an enterprising 20-year-old or even an enterprising 16-year-old to identify where they can fit because there will be plenty of not just jobs, but career opportunities that will be available to you, for you, in your own city, and they will be looking for you. I think that's right. I think that uh, we are seeing, to Levi's point, a lot of investment, and I'm hopeful that we can start to see more connected dots with our innovation space. Um, I think that uh, there's been, interestingly, a lot of disinvestment in pharma over the last few years, especially in the suburb communities, um, but there's a lot of change happening across them. Um, but ultimately, how do we leverage these opportunities um, through workforce through um, efforts to collectively move the needle. Um, so we have about 30 seconds left and I want to just again once reiterate to my colleague and friend uh, for bringing me along on the journey in Community Pulse in 2023. We're looking forward to more in 2024. Anything else you'd like to add? Uh, once again, thank you, Rocio and the uh, Can TV not for profit services crew and Yep, you can stream uh, us on channel, uh, stream us online and catch us on channel 21. This was Community Pulse. This is oh, Levi Moore. I'm Megan Phillips. And don't forget, uh, Takora, get well.
Yes. And to our other co-host and rotation, um, we'll see her next year. Okay. Thank you.